My name's Murphy. We're here at 97.9 The Wren, and we are talking to award-winning artist Judy Collins. Glad to have you on with us this morning. Well, thank you so much. Yes, and we're really looking forward to August 31st when you'll be performing at Orkney Springs, Virginia, at the Shenandoah Valley Music Festival. I think that it's going to be a great time. I'll be out there. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you. Good. So do you remember the first time you ever got on a stage and performed in front of an audience? When I was about four years old. And my father was on tour. I was still the only child. I was three, I guess. And we were in Butte, Montana. He was on tour doing concerts. And and he said, do you want to go on stage? And I said, oh, that would be fun. (laughs) I said, what will I do? What will I sing? And he said, well, it's good to sing a song you know. (laughs) Right, exactly. Which is always good advice. Uh, Yes. (laughs) And so I sang I'll Be Home for Christmas. And it was a great success. It was also April. So <laughs> right. That's how it all started. Oh, boy. That that got you a love for the stage, did it? Well, I was enchanted with the stage. My father was a performer, so I was exposed to all of that, all of what that means. The concert tours, the radio shows, the fundraisers, the shows for the all of the big uh, clubs, the Lions Club, the Everybody in Denver, we, and every you know, I was born in Seattle, so it all started in Seattle, and I was also exposed to everybody singing. My my uh, godfather was a great singer, who actually uh, had a Carnegie Hall debut, and the guys oh, wow. always sang. My father and his fraternity brothers, and, and the music was all around me. Oh, you're surrounded by it, yeah. Yeah. So you, know, you started early. Did you did you sing a lot with your father on stage? Or? I sang sometimes on the radio show. I sang in school shows. I sang in the church choir, in the school choir, uh, my teacher's choruses, master classes. I started studying the piano when I was five. So, you know, I, I had a constant uh, constant series of lessons and, and uh, structure and playing in various situation singing the first musical that i was in was snow white and i was 11 years old and i sang someday my prince will come (laughs) (laughs) well that's great yeah and that's uh that love of stage went all went into musicals as well i guess huh absolutely yeah yeah did you ever so i know that as your career went on you did send in the clowns uh great stephen sondheim song from the musical a little light music um, is that um, is that from your love of musicals that brought you to that song? Or? No, it's because I fell in love with the song. Yeah, it, it is a I phenomenal song. I heard it, song. and I didn't know anything about Sondheim when I heard that song. As a matter of fact, I didn't know anything about Little Night Music. I, I was completely in the dark. I was busy recording Amazing Grace and Both Sides Now, and uh, who knows where the time goes, and Someday right. Soon, and... You know, I had it already had a huge career and uh, had pretty much put my mark on what would then be called popular American music, radio and otherwise. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I was touring from the age of 22, or 20, I'm sorry, 19. I was 19. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Started, so started I've young. been doing this for 60 years, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, And boy. I'm beginning to get the hang of it. Uh-huh. You think you got it now? <laughs> well, I'm beginning to get the hang of it. Right. I don't think you're ever finished when you're learning. Right, right. And you're still doing, a, doing, still doing a lot of shows every year. How many dates do you do a year now? About 120. Oh, okay. So staying, staying really busy. That's yeah. right. Yeah, still recording as well, I understand. I have a new com- new album coming out in November called um, Winter Stories, which is with the Chatham County Line, a wonderful group. Some of them live in Raleigh, and uh, one of them lives in Colorado. We've had a wonderful time making that album, which will have great things on it. And then I'm doing a new album of my own material, which I'll be recording in a few weeks, which will come out in uh, early 2020. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, you're just keeping busy, aren't you? I have to. Right, right, right. Well, and especially when you do what you love to do. You're right, exactly. So, where you've sold about 55 million albums? That's not bad. I've sold a lot of albums, so yeah. that's very good to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. 
Well, um, I was also was just curious about, uh, you know, I know that uh, in the throughout your career, you've been really uh, heavy in social activism. My hand in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. And uh, so uh, I recently heard the song Dreamer. I really love that one. Oh, good. I'm glad you do. Yeah. I like it, too. Yeah. yeah it's an important song. What, uh, what brought you to that particular song? You know, I, I was watching a, a, an interview with a young woman who was a dreamer and who was talking about her mother being concerned and worried that she was going to get uh, deported. And it, it all happened, and suddenly it was a song. That's the way it happens sometimes. You don't really know. I didn't know what it was for a couple of years. It was just sitting around my um, my various and sundry notes, and uh, then suddenly, about a year and a half ago, it became a song, and I recorded it. And it is amazing how strongly audiences react to this song because fundamentally they would like to do something. Right. About the situation that's going on. And they don't, we don't really always know what to do. And right. I think part of it is that we have to get motivated. Getting motivated to um, be of service is always uh, a question of what you do and how you do it, when, where. But in those moments after they hear that song in a concert, you can hear their minds turning over. What is my part in this? Yeah, yeah, you can actually move people to do things, perhaps, or at least, or at least give them uh, a new thought process. The uh, thinking is the thing. Yes, the mm-hmm. thought is the thing. Yes, sitting it's, alone. It, it, that's one of the things which is so exciting and so interesting and forever changing about being a performer of live shows. There's always that moment. You know, you're sitting in the dark. You're listening to a performer, obviously. You're listening to somebody who has something to say. I'm not thinking about junk music particularly, but thinking about things that are thought-provoking, and you're sitting there by yourself, and you really you can't turn and talk to your friends because it would be rude and disruptive, and you have to turn off your phone. So really you're sitting there with your own conscience. Mm -hmm. And so you're being let alone for a while. You're listening. Right. And one of the things we don't do very much in this world is listen. We listen to a lot of chatter and a lot of BS on the television, but we're not accustomed to... That's why I love radio, frankly, because it allows time to think. Right. And there you are in the dark, by yourself, in an audience, and you're actually dreaming and thinking and a lot of things are coming to your mind so you have the privacy of things coming to you that might not arrive otherwise right is is that what kind of drew you to uh folk music in the beginning i love the stories i always loved the stories so when i was 16 i first started singing what we call folk music and uh i was hooked from the start yeah it uh it it says it says a little bit more than just some of the pop music that was on the radio at the time. Well, the stories, you know, I grew up with Moon, June, Spoon, all the Rogers and Hart. My father sang them to make a living. I knew all those songs. Mm-hmm. But there was something so spectacularly different about personal stories and about the kind of uh, perspective. Also, you're sitting there with a guitar alone in a room instead of having to have a full orchestra right. and a conductor and a, and 50, 55 musicians and a recording studio. So it's different, and it's very powerful. One person, a good, and it happened so suddenly. Well, it seemingly did. I mean the popularity of it, because pre-1957, or I suppose... Actually, the the Weavers had a hit with uh, Irene, with Good Night Irene in 1950, and then they had uh, On Top of Old Smokey in 1951. So they were actually kind of changing the perspective of what was allowed on radio mm-hmm. already. Yeah. And then by the time I started picking up a guitar, 55, uh, pretty soon um, 
the Kingston Trio was out there. Harry Belafonte was out there. It was slow but sure, but the real change was quite apparently quite sudden because suddenly it was okay to be out there with a with a guitar singing a song without 500 people in the choir and, right. and a huge orchestra and an enormously expensive production. Right, right. Much simpler, much more stripped down, which fit the lyric as well. So Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Well, speaking of uh, songs that you've written, can you tell us a little bit about uh, a couple songs? How about Holly Ann and Born to the Breed? Oh, the the song Holly Ann uh, uh, about my sister being a weaver, mm-hmm. I wrote probably in the in in 1971, maybe 70. I I I had started writing songs in 1967. The first song that I wrote was called Since You've Asked, and since then I've been writing ever since. I'm doing some brand new songs for this new album of my own compositions, which will come out in 2020. It's called Beauty and Resistance, and includes, of course, another version of the uh, Dreamer song. But I've been steadily writing, and yes, I wrote about my sister. Uh, The other one you mentioned was, what was it? Born to Breed. Born to the Breed. Yeah, Born to the Breed. And Born to the Breed, I wrote about my son, who was uh, uh, had 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 gone off on his own to be in a rock and roll band. And then, of course, progressively, I've written about situations. I wrote about the children uh, who were at risk of landmines in the former Yugoslavia. I've written mm. about 9-11. I've written about the... Um, Walls, which is a song that I wrote after my husband, Louis Nelson, designed the Korean War Memorial on the Mall in Washington, D.C. Oh, and so songs about certain situations have also occurred, but just songs about life in general. Um, well, The Blizzard may be a song of mine that is well known to my pr- personal audiences, although... The recording of it was never really out there. It was made in 89, but I've recorded it again for my new album with the Chatham County line. The Blizzard, when people hear it, they don't necessarily know it, but when they when I finish it, they all scream and clap and stand up and act as though they know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. They know it by the time it gets to the end, huh? <laughs> by the time it gets to the end, they know it very well. <laughs> great. Well, great. That must be a great feeling, then. It is a great feeling. And, of course, I've, as I said, I've always written in these past 50 years. Since Leonard Cohen asked me in 1967, after I'd recorded Suzanne, he asked me why I wasn't writing my own songs. And so I said, I don't know. And then I started writing my own songs. <laughs> it didn't occur to you before then, huh? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you started writing your own songs. You've written some great ones over the years. So. Thank you. I, yes. love the, the, I love the process of being able to sit down and work and find something that uh, amounts to a song. Has it ever come, I mean, does it come easier <laughs> now or is it about the same as it's always been? You know, the first song that I wrote, since you've asked, I sat down after <clears throat> Leonard asked me that question, and I sat down <clears throat> in my studio, <clears throat> and I wrote, since you've asked, and it took me about 30 minutes. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and, of course, that's that's the way they get you, because the next song took about five years. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. But it's anywhere between 40 minutes and five years. Sometimes you <laughs> just go, oh, well, you know, Dreamers was a good indication i wrote it in 19 in 2016 Mm -hmm. and it hung around in my notebook i was trying to figure out what to do with it and how to work it and then suddenly and then i started singing it in last year in 2018 so there are things that have hung around in my notebook for years i just finished writing a song called uh girl from colorado and i must have started that five years ago or something so they, they sit there and they emerge and they take shape and then you suddenly think of something you might do with them yeah i'm trying to write a song right now about gun control and and it's very very slow oh really yeah. <laughs> like everything about gun control <laughs> yeah yeah unfortunately right <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, well i've heard a lot of artists say that um, when they go to 
Um, sometimes when they sit down to write a song, it's almost like uh, that they're somebody's whispering in their ear and it just comes out. And other, oh, yes, other, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. So you found that to be true sometimes with some of your songs? Oh, yes. And you don't know when, when it's going to come, where it's going to come. Last night I was, I write a lot of poetry, and that's really the key to keep writing. And um, I had pulled out a few of these things that I'd written, poems mainly, that maybe they'll turn into a song, maybe not. And last night I was sitting around, and there's something I wrote a few years ago. And it, suddenly I got the chorus. I don't know where it came from. You know, I would say maybe Leonard Cohen's muse wasn't uh, was busy, right, <laughs> or maybe right. she wasn't busy <laughs> and had time to drop by. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's it's amazing when they just pop out of nowhere. So yeah, exactly. Right, right. All right. Well, um, I think that uh, we are getting close uh, to the end. Um, uh, but I do have one more question I want to ask you about, and you may have been asked this a few times before. Tell us a little bit about uh, Stephen Stills and Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good story. You know, I just was, I just did in the last uh, year and a half. Uh, Stephen Stills and I were on the road. We did 115 shows together and made an album together called Everybody Knows, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is a big song of Leonard Cohen's. Oh, okay. That we should be singing again. I, I sang it a lot on the tour with him, but I haven't sung it very much lately. Um, so we met when I was making a record for um, for uh, Electra in 1968. And <clears throat> it was a big change in my personnel. My band was uh, suddenly turned over, and I had some new people in it, including... Uh, Van Dyke Parks and the guys who play on all the country songs, uh, Buddy Emmons and James Burton. And uh, Stephen Seals walked in, and he started playing, and then we had this big affair. And and he wrote um, uh, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes for me, which was very nice of him. Very nice. Cool song to be written for you, right? (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, and we've remained friends all these years, so that's why it was possible to go out and do a concert tour and have a ball. We just had a most wonderful time. Oh, that's great! Yeah, and uh, what were you doing on tour as far as song wise? You're just doing a combination of of uh... we we did a number of of both our songs, mm-hmm. songs that he'd written, songs that I'd written. Um, <clears throat> we did a couple of. Uh, uh, other writers and um, we just and I did one of my we did one of my new songs called uh, River of Gold, so that was exciting to get <laughs> Stephen Stills to sing one of my songs. Right, that was a big deal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, he's yeah, really he's, funny. All right, great. Well, I really appreciate that, and it's been great talking to you today. And- a pleasure. Take care. Have all a great day. Hi, this is Judy Collins on the Wren. Hi, this is Judy Collins, and you're listening to 979 The Wren. All right, great. Well, I really appreciate that, and it's been great talking to you today. And A pleasure. Take care. Have right. a great day. Take care. Have right. a great day. Take care.